We're going to release the brake nice and slow. Good morning. Okay, this video was one I was hoping I would never ever have to make, but come to find out things can change in the blink of an eye. So if you're not new here, you can probably tell by now I am no longer in my home in Florida. As of two days ago, I took a plane ride up to the lovely state of Virginia for the sole purpose to take my lovely ZX6R out for a ride. Now, if you're new here and wondering why my motorcycle is parked a thousand miles away from where I live, it's because when I moved to Florida back in September, I moved to a place with an HOA that doesn't allow for motorcycles like this to be kept there. So I have left it in Virginia until I could find a proper parking solution, which I think I have one, but we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Now, yesterday I took the bike out to go and shoot something awesome for you guys. And as you could tell by the title and thumbnail, I ended up crashing. Now, thankfully, physically, I'm mostly okay. My ankle is a little swollen and my leg is killing me, but outside of that, I'm completely fine. And trust me, this could have been a lot worse. Bike in neutral. This side of the bike is completely fine. It's just the opposite side of the bike that's damaged because I low sided. And when I low sided, the bike ultimately landed on my left leg, which was not very fun. And I would have GoPro footage for you guys, but we do have one minor issue. Okay, for reference, this was the GoPro that I had on my helmet at the time of the accident. The only problem is it says unable to view. I go into the full thing and the one file that I need that has the crash on it is corrupted. And I don't know how to fix it. So um, there's that. So if you know how to fix that, uh, let me let me know. But in the meantime, I'm going to do a brief play-by-play -play of exactly what happened that led to the crash. So yesterday morning, I took the bike on an hour and 40 minute ride to go to a car show and meet up with some friends. After the car show, we all went on a cruise and that's kind of when things went a little bit bad. So on the way out there, I was a tiny bit nervous about the rain coming in, but that was like the least of my worries that day. This is the second year I've done this exact cruise with Reed. And last year we did it, it poured. If you look straight ahead, it don't look that good. I was riding with five other riders. It was me, my buddy Reed, and three other people. And fun fact, me and Reed, this was our first ride of the season on these bikes. So we were at the back of the pack trying to be very responsible because we were getting used to riding. So it was probably the smartest decision we could have made, which was to take it slow. Majority of the ride ended up going okay, but the problem was the pants I was wearing were not the most comfortable pants in the world, and I was sitting on my nuts. So I signaled to Reed at the moment, hey, I'm gonna pull over at the next safest spot so I can adjust, stand up, and get more comfortable for the rest of the ride because we had another like 30, 40 minutes home. It just so happened the spot that I wanted to pull over at was not the most optimal for something like this because I pulled into none other than a giant gravel pit. And I entered into that said gravel pit going a little too way too fast. And it like twisted my ankle in a weird way. I don't know if it's sprained or whatever happened and my leg is severely bruised on the back. It's not the most comfortable feeling, but the bike went down. And when I got up to go look at the bike, we discovered our first big issue with trying to get this bike back to at least the city so I can call somebody to have it towed back to this garage. Now I'll show you the rest of the bike in a second, but as you can see, there used to be a little foot peg thing here where you can go and click down or up to give yourself leverage to change gears. It completely snapped off. So I had to ride about 10 miles trying to get this thing to shift, which required me to put my foot in between this gap right here and finagle it to click it up. I'm not even kidding. It took a solid 45 seconds in between shifts. It was kind of funny. It sucked at the time, but we got the bike back into town. So as you can see here, the mirror's all kind of scraped up. My quad lock, the inner part that goes into the fork stem completely broke. So this is just kind of loosely in there. Unfortunately, my bar ends got scraped up alongside the clutch lever. Then the worst of it is going to probably be this fairing and this fairing that took up run of the fall. Little bit up top up here. The part that I'm probably most upset about is probably the transmission cover being damaged just because it's going to be an absolute pain to replace. And then the lower fairing is completely cracked and needs to be redone. But I don't really know how I'm going to deal with that because this bolt here is completely flattened. So you can't even fit anything in there to get that out. So that's going to be obviously objective number one is to figure out how to get this thing disassembled. And then we'll get all the parts kind of in order to try and get this thing fixed. Then unfortunately up top here, I don't know how well it comes across, but we have a few scratches on the gas tank. So after looking over the majority of the damages, we kind of discussed and we realized it's probably not the best decision to try and limp this thing an hour and 40 minutes back to this garage. So I called my brother and thankfully he was able to get off work this morning to come by and pick me up. So that's exactly what we did. And we loaded the bike up this morning and brought it back to here. The thing is, is this 
side somewhat clean. This side over here, uh, not so much. Now, as we look at majority of what's wrong with it, if you turn on the actual bike itself, it's not throwing any codes. Everything seems to be aligned. Nothing major happened. The drop sensor worked perfectly. And everything as of now seems to be in good working order. Minus the shifter. So once we replace the shifter, we can actually take this bike out and have some fun. But with that said, it kind of gets me excited. Not only is my leg gonna heal itself within a few weeks, this is giving us a prime excuse to do a full entire carbon fiber build on this bike. Meaning everything gets swapped out for carbon parts. Now you can call me an idiot all you want. There's probably 20 million different ways I could have saved the bike. But what happened happened. At the end of the day, I'm physically okay for the most part, minus a few bumps and scratches and a swollen ass ankle, but it could have been 10,000 times worse and that's all I'm thankful for. This is always fixable. I'm not always fixable, so I'm happy about that. <laughs> so in some senses, this is kind of a blessing in disguise because we will get to do some really cool stuff with the bike once it gets rebuilt with either all carbon fiber parts or a really cool design on the new set of fairings and maybe some new mirrors and clutch levers and that stuff and we'll actually get to build this thing out a little bit more than what it sits at with just an exhaust system on it. But in the next video, I'm definitely going to be pulling this entire bike apart so you guys get a better look and I can actually see if there's any further damage that I can't see with the fairings on. But I wanted to at least make an update video and show you guys because you've either seen it on YouTube shorts or TikTok by now that this bike was in a little bit of an oopsie. <laughs> but anyways guys, we're going to keep a big smile on our face because we got some big projects coming for this bike that I cannot wait to get started on. So thank you so much for watching today's video and listening to my explanation of me being a moron. I love you guys so much and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.